Okay, I have an Atlas milling machine, a small hobby mill that I bought a little over a year ago. I posted a video online uh, showing how it worked, and about two months after I got it, one of the, the, the gears in the turnomatic uh, gear train for the automatic feed broke. Um, I have a little machine shop here in my garage, and I wanted to actually manufacture my own gear to replace the one that broke. Um, so one of the things that I didn't have that's uh, fundamental to building a gear was an indexing head. Um, so I decided that since I have a machine shop here and some material that I'd build an indexing head to make the gear that I needed to fix the mill using the milling machine itself to uh, cut the gear teeth. So we'll come on over here and I'll show the end result. Okay, so this is the body of the indexing head that I made. I've got a base on here. It's uh, bolted together. I've got it completely taken apart with the exception of the base and this back plate that has the, the lock, the spindle lock. So I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, indexing head together and you'll see how, how I uh, built it. Now there were two things that I really couldn't make here in my shop and uh, that's the worm and worm wheel. And uh, the worm wheel is right here and the worm itself is right here. So I got these actually out of an electric motor that I bought at a swap meet. Uh, I paid eight dollars for a little electric motor that had a worm and worm wheel combination on it. This is actually a 10 to 1. So I have to change my formulas a little bit. The standard indexing head that I'm used to is a 40 to 1, but uh, really this, this works fine for what I need. So <clears throat> I'll start putting this together. The first thing I'll do is put the, uh, the worm in, the worm wheel in get it in place. I made a bushing here. Now this bushing I actually cut little rings for the grease. So when I pump grease into the grease fitting that I installed on the back here, <clears throat> it fills these rings and goes across. So it has plenty of uh, lubrication while it's working. <clears throat> so uh, this goes together like this. I apologize if it takes a little while to get this thing together. It's very precisely machined and uh, I have to get it just right just to get it on. I didn't want any uh, play between these two so I had to get them just right. So we'll get it together here. Okay. So it goes together. And I used uh, set screws here, Allen set screws, to uh, lock this, this uh, spindle bushing in place. And I uh, have my Allen wrench here. And this will lock right in place and it will return to the same spot every time when I take it apart and put it back together. So I've got the spindle in. And I tighten that down. And I can actually test and turn and make sure that it's, it's, it's sitting just perfect and it turns just right. Okay, so the next step is to put the worm in. I've got a uh, shaft that I machined with little flats to fit the worm. So I can engage it and turn it. It'll also get disengaged. And uh, I'll get to that later. I've got a brass sleeve that goes on this little shaft. The worm goes on. And we can put that in place. And again, this will lock down with a set screw right into position. Okay. <clears throat> now, the next thing I'm going to put on here is the uh, hole plate. This is a 12 hole plate that I made for the particular gear that I had to machine and I'll get to that in a minute. It's a 24 tooth gear. And so this hole plate screws right into place. So 
the whole plate is in place. I'm also going to put uh, on the back of my little spindle here <coughs> to hold this in place. I have a little brass washer and a hex screw. So now, every good indexing head, head has a set of sector arms, and so my sector arms, which I made these as well, uh, they they go right on here, and uh, you know they they're pretty small, so I don't have a locking screw, but I'm able to move it and advance it. And if I'm careful, I can uh, I can set my sector arms and use those. Okay, so next step here is to put on my crank. So I have a crank with a slot milled in it so I can set it for my different uh, hole plates that I may have to make in addition to the, the one that I made for the particular gear that I had to. And this will go on here and lock in place. <coughs> and I also have a crank pin and I made this on a carbon steel and it's got a spring inside and a pin so I can engage it and disengage it. And the sleeve just goes over and lets it roll freely so I can put my uh, Crank pin screwed into the crank, and then I can set my distance here, so it goes right in the hole, and then I can tighten down on this nut, I'm not going to make it really tight right yet, just set it up, you can see that it'll uh, go and engage, or if I want to just turn it freely. Right now the worm is not engaged. <clears throat> so the next thing that I'll show you, um, most indexing heads, commercial indexing heads, have the ability to do rapid indexing. And in order to do rapid indexing, you need to engage and disengage your worm uh, from the worm wheel. So I came up with a method of doing that. Right now my worm is disengaged, so this will turn freely. I want to engage. I take this pin that I made, and I've got a little hole in the back here. And I take and push the pin in the hole, and I can push the worm, which is right now disengaged, and I can push it into the crank and engage it, and then uh, I hold it in place with this little uh, block and some dowel pins that I put in here, and that just holds that worm in place and engage with the worm wheel so now I can turn it and you can see that when I turn the crank the spindle is turning so to do rapid indexing I have a rapid indexing plate this particular one is a 24 hole plate and I can put this on the end here and I can tighten it down with a little nylox nut. And again, I'm not going to make it super tight right now. I'm just going to snug it up. Just snug that nylox up right there. Now, if I wanted to do rapid indexing with this, with this uh, indexing head that I made, I'll pull out my block here that's blocking the the worm and then I just roll it away from the worm wheel and now I can spin this freely and here's my rapid indexing as you can see I've got a little pin here and this pin will engage as I turn so I can do rapid indexing and I can make any rapid indexing plate that I want from 2 to 24 6 3 any division that I want I can, I can lock it 
lock it in place. Another thing I put on here is a spindle lock. The spindle lock, when I turn it, locks the spindle in place. If I disengage this pin, I cannot turn this. It, won't, it, uh, it locks the spindle, so the uh, indexing head is completely assembled. Right now it's disengaged. <clears throat> Again, if I want to engage the worm, then I, I go ahead and uh, unlock the spindle. Take this pin. It's held in place actually by a magnet so it won't fall out. And put it in the hole in the back. Push it into the worm wheel. Roll it in place. Engage it with the crank pin. And then put the block in. And I can do plain indexing from here. This spindle is machined to uh, fit my the chuck of the Myford lathe that I have here. So I, I can put the chuck of my lathe on the spindle of this indexing head. It'll screw right in place. It's identical to the to the lathe spindle. And I can index. Now the gear that I had to make to fix my my milling machine was a uh, 24 tooth spur gear. It's actually uh, fairly small gear. Here's the broken one, if you can see. It's stripped out. And then the gear that I made to replace it with using this indexing head, and I had to order a, a cutter, is installed in the in the uh, gearbox right here. And it functions. So this gear. And my milling machine power feed was repaired. So an indexing head made at home. Thanks for watching.